friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're sewing up the adult high-waisted pleated skirt. I am super excited about this skirt. It's super cute. I love the pleats. I love that it's a woven fabric um, and it's got the shorties to go underneath it which can be worn with this skirt or with other patterns. So that's super exciting and fun. So let's get to it and sew it together. All right, friends, so we're going to get started with the shorts. Um, you don't have to make these, but I love having the option of these shorts under the skirt, so I am going to be making them. I'm using this very light fabric. It doesn't really match my, uh, it doesn't match my skirt fabric, but I figured it's okay because it's under the skirt, so nobody will be able to see it, and it's sort of the same color scheme. My skirt is gonna be like a plaid pink. I'm gonna show you. It's super cute. Um, and then I ran out of white elastic, so I'm using this black, but again, it's gonna be inside, so I don't think anybody's gonna be able to see it, so we're just gonna go for it. Um, I am first going to grab each leg of the shorts, and I'm going to sew that crotch seam right sides together on both. Now, one thing I love about this is too, that you can use the shorties um, for any other pattern. So if you just wanted to make these to wear underneath um, any other uh, dress patterns or skirt patterns, skirt patterns, this is great for that. So it's like you get two patterns in one. Um, so let's do that. While I'm at it too, I'm gonna grab my elastic and I'm going to just overlap it and sew it right sides, look, right sides together. It's, 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 Elastic it doesn't really have a right or wrong side. I don't think well it actually it does but I don't think it matters anyway I'm going to use a zigzag stitch to sew this together um, And I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right now since I'm over there sewing anyway All right, so now that our inner seam has been sewn we can grab one of our pant legs and turn it right side out and now we're going to go ahead and sew our crotch seam. So we'll fit uh, the right side out one into the inside out one, and we'll match right sides together that crotch seam right here, that inner seam actually that we just created, match both of them, and then we'll go up one side, right sides together along that raw edge, and then down to the other side. So it's just that whole curve, and we're gonna sew it together. Um, again, I'm using um, my serger. But for the shorties, you want to use a stretch stitch because this is done with the knit fabric. So if you're using a sewing machine, which is totally fine, you want to use some kind of stretch stitch for this because it's going to, you know, knit fabric stretches. Um, and if you just use a straight stitch on your sewing machine, um, the stitches will pop. So for this part of the tutorial, you will have to use some kind of stretch stitch, like a lightning bolt stitch or a zigzag stitch or triple stitch, whatever kind of stitch you're comfortable with, or even some um, stretch thread. Um, but I'm going to... Uh, I'm using my serger, so that does the stretch stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and sew around that curve. And then after that, I'm going to come back and just, and hem, let's just go sew the curve. All right, so now that our um, pants have been, our legs have been sewn together, we've got our shorties. Now, with knit fabric, you could very well leave that bottom raw the bottom raw edge raw. I was thinking, and I already cut this out, but I don't know, I was kind of thinking that it would be really nice to do with some, I have some stretch lace. So if you did the shorties also, you could do some, you know, like it's like elastic lace. It's, it's, it's like, um, it's not just like fabric lace. It's like actual uh, um, lace elastic. Lace elastic, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, it would be really cute to do lace elastic around the waist, so that way when you sew it on and you can see like the little lacy thing, I think that would be super pretty, and then put some leg, um, some, um, lace elastic at the legs as well. Um, if I was gonna put them on the legs because I don't want it to cinch in, I would probably just do a one-to-one -one ratio, so I would measure around um, the, the leg and I would just cut the, the elastic the same width so that way it's just sitting there. It's just looking pretty. It's not, it's not cinching in. Um, but I already cut this out and I don't wanna waste it so we're just gonna use this one. But I just know that next time I make these, I'll probably I'm going to use that um, lace elastic. 
or like you know like the elastic that you use to make um undergarments with and stuff like that because it's so pretty all right i'm gonna go from the back where i sewed the elastic together to the front and i'm just gonna mark it because we're going to quarter that elastic um so that we can attach it on so now i'm matching the front and the back and going to the sides <clears throat> and i'm gonna do the same for my bottoms i've got my front and back and we're gonna go to the sides to find my quarters. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fit in my elastic into my shorts. And we're gonna sew them right side on the on the outer side, the right side. Because then once it's sewn, it's gonna flip like this, and you're going to the, the elastic is gonna be on the top. Like I said, mine I have white stitching with black elastic on the waist. It doesn't match, but you know what? It's okay, nobody's gonna see it, it's gonna go under my dress. But, now I've got all these wheels turning about lace um, elastic. I think it would be super pretty to do that. Comment below and let me know what you think. All right, I'm gonna head over to the, I'm gonna do this on my serger. You can use any kind of stretch stitch. Sometimes it's easier also to do it, depending on your elastic, to do it on your sewing machine with like a zigzag stitch or something like that, if your machine doesn't love uh, sewing elastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch out the elastic to even it out with the shorts and sew it on at the raw edge. All right, I think I got sidetracked with that, what I was saying earlier about the fact that the um, shorties, if you're making them with knit fabric, which you should be making them with knit fabric, knit fabric doesn't necessarily have to be hemmed, so it's up to you. I think I'm gonna leave it raw um, because maybe later I might add some of that elastic uh, that I was talking about, the lace elastic. But if not, if you want to um, hem it, you can fold it up half an inch of hem allowance and stitch them up with a hem. And then the waist, since it's completed, you can um, go ahead and uh, steam that seam and top stitch around the waist if you wanted to do that. I'm also going to be leaving it just as is because um, it doesn't bother me, but some people it will bother, like if, you're, if, if the seam is trying to come up, so if you top stitch it, it will stay down and it won't like rub on your body if that's something that you're uncomfortable with or whatnot. But these are done. Look at how cute they are. And they will be so perfect to wear um, under any kind of dress or anything like that. Or even just to wear like, you know, out to exercise or whatever you, you know, some shorties, cute shorties, especially if you use really cute fabric or whatnot. So let's move on to the skirt, which I'm super excited about. All right, so for my skirt, I'm using this beautiful plaid. It's so pretty, I'm super excited about it. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to finish the raw edge of the side seams and our bottom where we're going to hem. Now you can hem, you can do that, but if you don't wanna do that, you can go ahead and do a uh, fold fold, so quarter inch, quarter inch, um, if you wanna do that for your hem. Uh, but actually finishing the raw edge either on a sewing machine or on your serger, Makes it super easy, I feel like. So it is up to you how you wanna do it. So I'm gonna go finish the raw edges and then we'll come back and give it a memory fold or go on if you wanna go ahead and hem it. Uh, you can go ahead and hem it before we do the pleating. It's up to you. Um, so let's do it. All right, now that I've finished the raw edges, I'm going to grab my skirt and we're gonna give it a memory hem. So I'm gonna grab my right side, make sure I grab the right side. Sometimes it's hard to tell which one's the right side and which one's the wrong side. And we're going to fold that half an inch right there. Now, if you want to go ahead right now and hem it, like I said, you can um, go ahead and do that. But I'm just gonna leave the memory fold and I'll just hem it after. Um, but. Again, you can do that beforehand, so that way, then you can work on your pleats and be done with that. It's up to you. All right, I put my iron aside. I'm gonna actually put these other ones aside so I can have my whole mat to work with. And I grabbed some pins. Um, and you can use pins, clips, you can use whatever you want with this, but I actually like to use the uh, pins. I'm gonna grab my pattern piece. This is my skirt pattern piece, and I'm gonna fold up the bottom of it. like an inch, two inches, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna fold it up enough that I can see it, my whole pattern piece, when I lay out my skirt. 
So I'm gonna place my skirt on my mat or whatever you're gonna place it. And I'm gonna put it right, my, my pattern piece right on top of it. Okay, and this is my fold right here. Make sure you keep your fold where your fold will be. And as you can see right here, I can see this edge. You can't see it because it's long, but I can see the bottom edge as well. You see that? And I need to make sure, that's why I turned the skirt up because I want to make sure that I can see that because what I'm going to do is, now you can see there's quite a few lines on here because I printed two sizes, but I can't tell which one's the size I'm using. I'm using a size large. Um, I printed a size large and a size medium. Um, so that's what you can see both. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the second line. So here's my one, my first line. I'm not going to start at that first line. I'm going to start at the second line and I'm going to grab a pin and I'm gonna place it right at that line to mark. Now, you can mark with a pin, you can mark with uh, Taylor's chalk, you can mark with wa uh, washable. Uh, yeah, washable marker. You can mark with whatever you want. I am marking with pins. I just find that easier because when I'm actually putting it together, um, I'll show you, I just find it that it's easier when I already have the pins in place. So I'm just putting a pin right where each line is, like each pleat is gonna go. Now I think I'm gonna run out of pins, so I'm gonna have to, I have some other pins in there that I, I can use. I'm so sorry I didn't realize you couldn't see it, but here's my pattern piece, here's my edge of my skirt, and like I said, I started in the second uh, line and I'm placing like I have the two sizes right here you can see the two sizes I'm placing the pin in the size that I'm using <laughs> so I'm placing that pin right there you see that my line right there and then here's the next one I'm just going to be marking my fabric with these pins I'm gonna do that all the way down so when I get to the edge where my half of my skirt is then I'll grab my pattern piece and I'll flip it to the back. Hold on, let me let me finish this and then I'll show you. All right, I'm right here. I'm gonna move my fabric over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip it around. Okay, so make sure that I have the same distance. Here's my clip, my pin. Here's where it ended, so like that line right there. So I'm just flipping my pattern over and placing it right in the same spot. It should match up right here on this end. And then I'm going to keep going, adding those pins right where those lines are. I can still see them on the other side of the pattern piece, but if you can't, then you can um, flip it upside down like this. And it still will be the same thing. See right there? It would be the same thing and then that way you can still you can see the lines perfectly so I'm gonna do it all the way down all right Whew, that was a lot of pins now what we're going to do is we're gonna do the same to the bottom because we want to mark it to help us pleat the skirt now we're not going to uh, flatten this down so it won't matter that your um, hem is already done or not done because it's just gonna help us when we're pleating the skirt to iron it all the way down but it's not gonna get tacked down so you can put that anywhere so we're gonna do the same thing start at the end and put those pins right where they start at the second line and go all the way down so I'm gonna do, finish this for this one and I'm gonna do it for the other panel as well, my back panel. So now comes the fun part and I actually, I know some people say the fun part and it's in quotation marks, but I actually do like this part. I don't know why. I think it's kind of cool. Okay, so now we're gonna grab and it's kind of hard to do here because I don't have a whole lot of area. So I'm gonna go this way. So we've got pins in a row. All right, so I pleated a couple already, but I'm gonna show you. The first pin, we're gonna name them. A, B, and C. So here's the first pin, which is A. 
and he's got a blue head. Let's let's actually do this. A has a blue head. That's the first one. The second one is C, uh, B. <laughs> I don't know my alphabet. And the third one is C. If you can see, the yellow head is C. A, B, C. So we're going to grab A and I'm going to grab it on this side and on the bottom, the top and the bottom, and I'm going to bring A. We're going to say hello to B, but we're going to come over here and hug C. It's going to be like, oh, hi. So you can see the two, the yellow and the blue are touching C and A. And now we're going to hold them together. There we go. And that's my pleat. And I'm going to do the same for the bottom. Make sure you have your letters correct. A, B, C, here, C. This one came out a little bit too much. Slow down a little bit. She's like, I want the other A. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you again. I'm just moving the pins over. You could clip it, you could however you wanna pin that, okay? I'm doing it sideways because it's hard for, well, let me see if I can do it this way. I'm going to show you right here again, though you can't see the bottom, but the bottom is doing the exact same thing. We've got A, so this is the pleat, it's already gone. So A, B, and C. We're going to grab A. I'm grabbing A at the bottom as well. And we're going to go up, and we're not going to do anything with B. B's going to stay right there, and then we're going to go all the way to C, that third pin. And then we're going to pin them together. So like the B is kind of folded, so you can see from the back to create those pleats. And we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom because we want it to help us as we later steam it uh, in the shape that we want. At the bottom doesn't really matter as much because it's just gonna be, it's just holding it together. The bottom is just holding it together. The top is what's gonna get sewn this way. All right, so we're gonna go over to the, move over again. Here's A, B, and C. We're gonna grab A. We're gonna, I like to grab the pin and kind of bring it over. Now we're gonna match it up with C. Here's B, C, right there. Super easy, super fun. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this all the way across the whole skirt and to my other panel as well. We are done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give this skirt a super nice steam. So my pleats can all be nice and straight. I feel like that works better when I stand up. And this is when pinning at the bottom also comes into play because it helps straighten them up really, really well. Now, if you want, you can go in and stitch the pleats down a little bit, about an inch or so. Don't stitch them up too much, because if you stitch them up too much, uh, then that will mess up the width of the waist. Um, but you can give them a little bit of a stitch down. This bottom part right here, it will. this pins will come undone at the bottom. This is just for this uh, ironing purposes. Anyway. If you stitch it down too long, it's gonna make the waist too tight um, and it will mess that up, but um, you can stitch them down a little bit. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna continue without stitching them down. While I'm ironing this, I'm gonna tell you there's two different kinds of waistbands. There is the ribbing waistband and then the, um, uh, what do you call it? What is this? Um, I just drew a blank what this is, a uh, woven. <laughs> I couldn't even think what the, what it was. Okay, and the woven waistband. I'm gonna go with the woven waistband. Um, so that's the option I'm working on today. I'm gonna pull this down here, the skirt, and I'm gonna find my half of my skirt, which will be right here. I'll keep that in mind right there so I can mark it. Where that gray, that tan is, whatever color that is. And then I'm gonna grab my one of my waistbands. I'm also going to find the half of it right here. I'm gonna place that right on top. I wish I would have been 
better at marking. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew that waistband on. As I'm sewing it, I'm going to remove these pins. So I'm gonna sew it down, and I'm gonna do the same for the other side, for my other side. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove these bottom pins now because there's really no point of them anymore. They were just there to help me align the skirt and when I was ironing the pleats. Um, so I'm just gonna remove them now. All right, so now that my waistband has been on, I'm going to grab my iron and iron that seam allowance up towards the waistband and we're not going to top stitch it yet we're going to come back to that in a minute after when we do our lining and then i'm going to grab my zipper put this these skirt panels to the side i'm super excited things going to be super cute i'm going to open up my zipper and what it's recommended to do is you can grab your zipper stopper i mean your zipper and kind of fold it out and give it a little steam to help it not be so stiff um so i'm just kind of folding it in half the zipper side zipper side i guess i don't know and i am just kind of giving it a little steam now my iron i turned it down a little bit so it's not as hot and i'm not like just touching right up to the teeth but not really touching the teeth so it's kind of loosens them up a little bit the the zipper and makes it easier to work with. Y'all, this is my first time doing an invisible zipper. I've never used one before, so I'm excited about it. All right, so I've got my zipper, and as you can see, I'm gonna pull my zipper all the way up. There's where my zipper stops. If you pull that down, there is like these little rubbery things that are your zipper stoppers, or sometimes they're metal, whatever it is, depending on what zipper you're using. We're gonna go from that spot and go three quarters of an inch, I mean, three eighths of an inch, one, two, three, and we're going to mark it on both sides. So I just put pins there. You can mark it with chalk or marker, whatever you wanna mark it with, but I just did the little pins. All right, so now we're going to grab our skirt and what we're going to do is we're gonna lay our zipper. I'm gonna open it all the way and lay our zipper right sides together. The zipper and the skirt are right sides together and see where you mark that, that's where it's going to start. And then we're gonna pin it or clip it or whatever you do to that side edge of our skirt, right sides together, all the way down. Make sure that your seam is facing up. All right, then we're gonna head to our sewing machine and with a zipper foot, we're going to sew as close to the edge as possible all the way down. When you get to your zipper stopper, we're just gonna go all the way down as far as their foot will let us, and then back stitch. All right, so now that we've finished up the zipper on the one side, we're gonna grab our other side, the one that goes right on top of it, and we're gonna grab our zipper, and we're gonna attach it to that side. Again, doing the same thing that we did on this side, where we grab, so I'm gonna place it, now it's facing down right here, because I want this zipper to face down right sides together. Whoops, that's the wrong side. This is the right side of the, fab, of the skirt, and I'm gonna grab the zipper, and we're gonna place it right sides together, starting where I marked it. All right, so we're gonna grab, we finished our zipper here. We're gonna grab our, this is our finished zipper already sewn on. Here's our other side of the zipper and here is our skirt. This is our continuation of our skirt. This is the other panel and I'm putting it right side right here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the zipper right on top of it, right sides together. So I'm flipping it so it's right sides together as you can see right here. So the right side, it will start, I mean, it will start, the zipper will start right where we marked it. And we're going to pin it. Or clip it or whatever you do. 
right along that raw edge. The right side of the zipper is with the right side of the other side of the skirt. Now if you're a little bit unsure about zippers, you may want to base the zipper on first, like with a long straight stitch on your sewing machine first, and then check it out and measure it and see if, if you know if, if it turned out. And if it did, then you can go on. See here? Because now we're gonna face the skirts. Right, if we face the skirts right sides together, the zipper is straight. So make sure the zipper is straight when you're putting it on. All right, now once you're done with your zipper, you're going to actually zip it up and make sure that your waistband align. And I should have done this beforehand, before I even attached the zipper, make sure that they aligned correctly. And I didn't. Um, I started my zipper a little bit too high on the one side. So I'm actually removing my one side of my um, zipper and I'm gonna redo it and I'm gonna actually do it a little bit closer. This was the first side, the first zipper I did, the first side. And I didn't go as close to the edge as I should have for it to be really invisible. So I'm doing it anyway. It's not that hard. Um, I'm grabbing my handy dandy seam rippers. And I don't know if everybody knows this because I did not know this when I started sewing. But the way to use a seam ripper is to have this little red uh, little ball go right in the side of the fabric. I'm gonna show you a close up. And I'm gonna grab it like the fabric here. And there's my thread right there and I'm gonna put the little ball right inside and then I'm gonna grab the fabric and the zipper apart and just pull and it just slides right on there to remove that like so super easy kind of it's harder to do it when I'm trying to record it but you just grab it and then you just pull it look at how easy that is so I'm gonna remove it and do it again Make sure that it's nice and straight and even. Now don't go, you know, wild and just like, ah, cause it can rip, you know, seam rippers are very sharp. So I'm just doing it lightly as I go. Um, and just opening that up, removing that zipper off. And then I'm gonna sew it back on and then we'll come back and finish out our skirt. All right, because I want you all to learn from my mistakes, I'm gonna show you what I did. I actually, the one side is already sewn, the one I, I left it sewn. So then I went ahead and closed my zipper. And then once I closed my zipper, I went ahead and placed it right sides together with the other side of my skirt. This is how it's gonna get put on. And I make sure that I'm matching the seams. So make sure that the seams align on the waistband and the top of the waistband and at the bottom. And then I went ahead and clipped. And now I'm going to go back to the front and unzip it and head over to my machine and sew it on. And I'm gonna cross my fingers and pray really hard that it is lined up correctly. So now if you're still unsure, you can go ahead and do a basting stitch and then remove it. Because it was so easy for me to remove that stitch, I'm just gonna go with a regular stitch all the way down and let's hope it works. Moment of truth. Y'all, I like to share those things with y'all because if I'm making mistakes, I want you all to see um, how I fix the mistakes and what we can do to make it better um, so that we can learn together much better. That seam is butting up right next to each other and the zipper looks so much better. I am so pleased with how that turned out and I'm so glad that I did that because I would have come back and seen it and, and thought, just be annoyed the whole time that it wasn't even. Um, so take your time, don't be like me. I usually do, just go for it. Um, and measure it out and make sure that it's even, that way it all matches up. And don't be scared to make that mistake. Um, sometimes I think we're so scared, it lets us keep us from doing something like this project. You know, I'm kind of scared of zipper, so I'm like, oh, I don't know if I wanna do it. It really isn't that hard. And if you make a mistake, you learn from it because now I remember, now I'll remember next time to just make sure that I, you know, measure it out correctly or that I make sure that it's even and before I get started and it m will make the next project so much easier. So now I have it 
inside out and I'm matching those raw edges at where the zipper is. And I'm gonna grab my zipper and I'm going to, my zipper tape, and I'm gonna pull it out kind of like sideways because I'm gonna sew the, the rest of it together. So like the bottom of the skirt, like the zipper ends, I'm gonna sew the rest of it right sides together. So I'm gonna sew up to where the zipper is and then I'm gonna sew up a little bit, like about a quarter inch up from where the zipper starts. So like I can eat that zipper, like tape it down basically, like sew it down. So let's go do that. While I'm over there sewing that up, I'm also going to match up the other side and sew it up as well. Um, if you have not hemmed yet, go ahead and make sure you fold that seam allowance down, the hemming seam allowance down, um, so that way it will be, it will match up. While we're here, you could open this up and tack your zipper tape down to the seam allowance. Um, you can do that by sewing by hand or uh, with the sewing machine, however you want to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tack it down real quick. I'm only tacking it down to the seam allowance. I'm not tacking it down to the skirt or nothing, just the seam allowance. All right, so I am going to grab my waistband lining and I'm gonna place some interfacing and attach the interfacing to it, to the lining, both pieces. Then I'm gonna put both pieces right sides together and sew a straight stitch to sew them together. Now I'm going to open that up, I sewed it. Open it up and steam that seam allowance open. Now I'm gonna grab my skirt and I'm gonna open that zipper. And we're going to attach this liner to the, uh, uh, the waistband. So I'm gonna start right here at the side of the waistband, the side of my skirt, and we're gonna, gonna pin it all the way around the top raw edge all the way around to the zipper tape. So like the raw edge of the waistband will come right, see that zipper tape right there? Right to the edge of the zipper tape, like to that raw edge. Ooh, we are almost done. Okay, now our waistband liner is sewn in. So what we're going to do is the top edge of the waistband, we're gonna fold that in. Uh, 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that down towards the inside of the waistband and steam it down. See right there, it's steamed down. And then we're going to fold it wrong side out, so like the wrong way. So the right side of the outer and the liner are touching. And right here in the corner where that zipper is, you see the zipper right there hanging out still? We're gonna make sure that the band is folded and we're going to stitch right here along the edge. Now don't stitch over the teeth of the zipper, but we're gonna nail that um, outer band down. We're gonna sew it down right here at the outer edge. Both edges. And make sure that that fold that you just created, it is still folded up. So here is the waistband. It's been folded and then it's gonna be placed right over where that zipper is and the zipper tape and we're gonna sew right down. Sew it down to the zipper tape, but don't sew it on the teeth. So now we're gonna come to the corner and trim that zipper tape and the corner without cutting the thread, just the corner. And then we're going to flip it right side out. And here's our band. It's almost ready, our skirt is almost ready. And now the next step will be adding the elastic in there and top stitching and hemming. But first, before you do that, you may wanna go try it on and make sure that everything is nice and fitting and everything. And then we're gonna come back and add the elastic and top stitch and hem and we're almost done, it's looking so good.
All right, you all, I just literally tried on my skirt and it fits perfectly. So I don't even need to add uh, elastic, but if you do, you would add it to the bottom edge all the way around depending on um, how snug you want it uh, to be. Mine fits just perfectly, so I'm not even adding any elastic. There is no need for me to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this waistband down and place the, fold, the part that's folded. It's going to go right over, end up going right over those pleats. And then we're going to go over to our sewing machine and top stitch it down to top stitch that pleat and then we're gonna go back and hem where we created that hem allowance and we'll be done and I'm gonna show you how it looks. I'm super excited. All right, my friends, how adorable is this skirt? I love it. It's got that cute zipper, the invisible zipper, so you can't even really see it. There it is. And it's got the built-in shorts. Not built-in, but the shorts that you can put under. So in case you, you know, go out and there's a high wind, you don't have to worry about anything. And it's more comfortable when it's hot and all that sorts of things. But I love this. It turned out super adorable. I just think it's super cute. And it really wasn't even that hard when you really think about the only thing that was more complicated, it's the pleats. And that's not even complicated, that just takes more time. But this was super cute. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't so you never miss any of our tutorials. Um, go check out our other tutorials such as this one right here. This is a Chapman cardigan that I hacked. Um, so our tutorial is on our channel too if you want to check it out. But I just think this looks adorable. I am in love. Um, I hope you're in love as well. Uh, come check out our patterns over at alienmag.com. Alienmag.com. Talk too fast when I'm excited, elliamac.com and all the information for where to grab this pattern will be linked below. So go find it, hit that bell um, so you'll be no notified for any of our, when any of our videos release. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you all next time. I'm gonna do a little spin for you. Bye.